springtime is big walleye time, and we are diving in on all things walleye. I love doing this. Including favorite springtime baits of the pros, detailed guide reports, gear and tackle, and how to use them to catch more and bigger fish. Whether you're a seasoned pro or just starting out, this episode is packed full of information from beginning to end. This is Angling Buzz, brought to you by Omnia Fishing, a smarter way to shop for fishing tackle. Well, it's finally that time of year. Minnesota Fishing Opener is here, and it lands on May 13th. And looking at the fishing reports from surrounding states, Wisconsin, North and South Dakota, the fishing has been excellent. Walleye anglers are catching a lot of fish, not only from a boat, but also from shore. And that being said, this episode is all about how to find and catch springtime walleye. And generally speaking, walleye are pretty much done spawning. They do prefer to spawn in and around rivers and creeks and prefer flat bottom kind of rubble rock areas with current and also water temperatures in that 42 to 50 degree range in the spring. In today's show, we're joined by walleye guru Al Linder. So dad, what can you share with us? You know, some thoughts that you might have about springtime walleye that people can think about. At this time of the year, I love fishing walleyes. That means there's a lot of fish in shallow water and sometimes in a very confined area. By shallow water, I'm talking about 10 foot of water or less with four to eight feet pretty consistent on most of the lakes that I fish most of the time. Now, when you're looking on these flatter areas, the kind of location, you want a lot of gravel, some mixed weeds, scattered rocks, uh, it's important to remember that perch and shiners spawn right after the walleye spawn. So it's a natural built-in forage base for them. They know where the goodies are at. That's why they're there. Side imagery is really critical. Your side imaging unit, you can get on these flats and you find the big concentrations of fish. You see a few fish here, a few fish there, a few fish here. When you get in an area, these fish are doing a lot of roaming, but they're in a given area. They're fairly active, they're moving in and around. You find an area with a lot of fish, you drop your trolling motor and go to work. Yeah, I fish a lot with you for walleye in early spring. And a lot of anglers, you know, they do like to drift, they do like to drag, but I know you cast a lot and no live bait as well, and that can be very effective. Well, mainly we're fishing a lot of clear water lakes and the fish are shallow, they're spooky, they're moving away from you. And uh, as you start approaching them, you can see they know you're there. You, you can't get real close to the fish. Yeah, you know, most of the bites will come on the first half of your cast about halfway back. Then I just reel in and make another, another cast. Remember, these fish are roaming in an area, but you got to have your bait away from you, not get real, real close to them. They just won't bite. And how about baits and presentations? I'll start with an artificial. It's going to be a jig naturally with a soft bait on it. I'll have a couple rods rigged different. I'll have a big bite bait suicide shad on one and a big bite bait slim minnow on another, on an eighth ounce head and a quarter ounce head to feel out the mood of the fish, how aggressive they are. Uh, another bait, another jig that's one of my all time favorites in cool and cold water is the VMC Moontail Jig. This hair jig can be a killer this time of the year. When the fish are on this thing, there is no faster way to put them in the boat. No question that live bait works, particularly early in the season on a lot of the good walleye lakes, a shiner on a jig can absolutely be deadly, no question about it. Okay, and how about crankbaits and rattlebaits? Trolling shad wraps can be a killer and jigging ripping wraps can be a killer, especially on certain bodies of water. Bodies of water that tend to have really, really big fish, like bodies of water that drain in and out of the Great Lakes. And how about when it comes to just the movement of walleye? Yeah, just remember, keep an open mind. The fish are moving a lot. Here today, gone tomorrow. So you gotta keep up on your game. You can catch them one afternoon and catch a whole bunch of fish here. You go back there the next day and there's not a fish to be seen on your electronics. There's a half mile down the lake on another flat. They're constantly, constantly moving this time of the year and you have to do the same thing to stay on a bite. Well, thank you for your time and sharing some value insight into springtime walleye. And next is our Timely Topics feature. We're gonna start off with Sam Sobey, who has four simple approaches for springtime walleye. It's intimidating, 
Walleye fishing is intimidating. Um, I grew up a bass angler, I'm still a bass angler, but my whole life I wanted to catch more walleye. So over the past couple years, I've been hanging out and fishing with buddies like Hayes Baldwin and a variety of other folks, and they've been teaching me more and more about walleye fishing. What I've really come to realize is don't be intimidated. Just use a few simple approaches, put your head down, make lots of casts, and you'll be surprised that walleye fishing is not that tough. So let me show you like the four approaches that I found the most success with. Number one, a rip and wrap. <sighs> Especially early in the year, a rip and wrap crutches. This color's bad lipstick. Right now we're out at Green Bay and um, we're really putting on a clinic with a rip and wrap. Number two, a moon tail, a bucktail jig. These are freaking money. If you're not sure what size to buy, go with three ace, you can't go wrong. Deadly. Number three, just a moon eye jig. A jig and a min is so elementary and it works. Buy some fat heads, rig them on the back of this moon eye jig, pitch it out there, slowly pop it back. It works everywhere. And last but not least, probably my favorite is a number five shad wrap. You can go up to number six in a variety of other sizes depending upon the water you're fishing, but a number five shad wrap is so deadly. So yeah, those are four approaches. Give them a shot. If you're intimidated to walleye fish, don't be. Check those out and catch some walleye. And next, we're heading over to North Dakota with Johnny Candle. He's going to share his thoughts on springtime walleye. And these techniques really can be applied anywhere. I've been uh, guiding full time on Devil's Lake now for 22 seasons. This will actually be my 23rd this year. And uh, what a great place. During a long tournament career, it was one of the most incredible lakes that you could take batting practice on, for lack of a better word, because you can fish any technique you want here and catch them. Pitching jigs and crankbaits like today, live bait rigging in the summer, trolling crankbaits and lead core, bottom bouncers, it all works. So it's been a great lake to live on to keep your skills sharp. But the other part that's unique about Devil's Lake is it's like fishing a brand new body of water every year. Since 1993, when the lake began flooding, it's been a different level every spring. It's never the same two years in a row. This year, perfect case in point, it's up four feet from a year ago. Four feet of water is a really big deal on any lake, let alone a lake that just went from 120,000 acres of water to 160,000 acres of water by coming up four feet. That's a lot more water to look at. Fish use different structure, different depths, water warms up quicker, stays warmer longer or not quite as long. Oh, just so many things to think about. And I truly love that challenge of fishing a new lake every season. You might think I'm half loopy doing what we're doing, right? We're in a flooded duck marsh in about six feet of water casting up into two or three targeting walleye, but it's that time of year where it's all about water temperature. We've got 58 degrees and it's steadily climbing up. The whole food chain is starting in this shallow, flooded, marshy area. Uh, warm water brings insects and larvae, which brings minnows, smaller fish, larger game fish, and they all want to eat the same food. So we had a white bass already, now a walleye. And when we hit that right spot where the water color is right, the water temperature is right, and the fish are there, it's gonna be gangbusters. So this time of year, the, the fishing isn't rocket science. Man, I hate to use a cliche like that, but I guess I just did. Some of the walleye are hitting right on the bank, most of them about halfway back. And it's not a slow, steady retrieve, and it's not a real aggressive retrieve, but a series of lifts and drops. Let that jig fall till it hits the bottom. Lift it up kind of slow, let it fall till it hits the bottom. I'm gonna say eight out of 10 bites every day, they're gonna catch it on the drop. Pretty straightforward, nothing too fancy. Oh, oh yeah, buddy. Woo! That's what Devil's Lake's all about right there, my friend. <laughs> it's a beautiful fish. Goes great with a near limit of eaters in oh, there. Yeah. So we got a meal, we got some white bass, we got some northern pike. Yeah, we you saw everything there is to see. You got everything you want on a fishing trip. You, you said you got some nice eaters, uh, cap it off with a couple of really nice fish. It's been an amazing day, but when do you come to Devil's Lake and not have a good day? <laughs> You're absolutely right. It's what a great a lot of time. Fun. What a great time. Let's get that big girl back, and uh, man, what I can't think of a better way to end her.
Hey folks, Johnny Candle coming to you from the shores of Devil's Lake, North Dakota. And as you can tell by looking over my shoulder from my backyard, it's gonna be a little bit before we get a boat in the water. But don't fear, the walleye and pike are biting. If you can find any open water where there's current, near a bridge, any of the coolies, any of the runoff and drainages coming into Devil's Lake, the bite is absolutely on fire. I've had several friends out taking advantage of this the last couple days. And it's really simple this time of year, grab a six and a half, seven foot spinning rod, put some 10 or 15 pound super line on it. And on the business end, put a fluorocarbon leader, a quarter ounce jig and a white swim bait like this pro swimmer right here. And that's all you're gonna need. Get out there, have a good time. The season's open, the water is opening. We're gonna be firing up here shortly. Come on over and visit us. Take care, have a great week. Thanks, Johnny. Now let's head over to Minnesota and join Billy Rosner on Lake Vermilion. The late ice out up here on Vermilion, I expect the walleye to be shallow. Uh, focus on your areas where you got a river coming in, river going out. Uh, you got a bunch of creeks also that come in and out of Vermilion. Focus on those areas up and down those shorelines anywhere from four to eight feet, maybe that next break out. And don't forget the deep water bite on Vermilion too. It's kind of a unique deal. A lot of those smaller eating sized males will stack up in those troughs and holes off of some of your deeper breaks in that 24 to 30 foot of water. And how I like to focus on those, those deeper fish, I like the uh, VMC hardball jigs. I'll tip them with a rainbow minnow or a plastic, you know, like a, a big bite split tail or a kaolin tail of some kind. And this vertical jig, those deep fish, watch electronics, stay over the top, and uh, that should give you some good wall action. The shore fish, again, a VMC jig with a minnow or a plastic, a kaolin or a big bite. Uh, also in those areas, you could do some uh, long line trolling up those river systems. That's been fun, man, this has been fun. Uh, with like uh, number five or number seven, seven Rapalas, even some of the original floating Rapalas, same thing, you could cast those areas. Uh, a lot of different ways to get into them. I mean, you could, uh, rip and wraps will work too, even this time of year really well. So have a great opener and be safe out there. Thanks, Billy. Now let's head down to Leech Lake with the Leisure Outdoor Boys. Hey everybody, Toby Cavalli-Vog with Leisure Outdoor Adventures bringing you this week's Angling Buzz Fishing Report for Leech Lake. The ice is pushing off the big lake, we're almost ice free. It's happening really, really fast. We got this beautiful week. Obviously it's nice, it's in the upper 60s and the smaller bays are now opening. Some of them have been open for a few days. So the crappies are just starting to push. They're gonna do the little two step. They're gonna go in shallow one day. They'll be back out as the water temperature up, goes up and down, probably the afternoons and evenings, that warmer water period. So we're gonna get your best action this week for crappies and sunfish up on the Leech Lake area. So the transition's happening, ice is coming off, Panfish are moving in, and that's our first target species of the year, spring fishing Leech Lake. It's gonna start happening this week. And of course, next week, we have fishing openers. So hopefully all the ice is off the big lake, which I believe it will be. The shiners will be stocked up, hopefully, in the, in the uh, bait shops. And we'll all be excited talking about the Minnesota opener. Leech Lake Fishing Report, it's all about the crappies and sunnies. Get out there, good luck fishing, tight lines, everybody. Now let's head a little further south to the Alexandria area with Joe Segura. Hard to believe only a couple of weeks ago uh, we were out on the ice and uh, now look behind us we have wide open water so I uh, feel pretty fortunate for that. We had some nice rain and some wind uh, that took care of this uh, ice in short order for us. So um, you got to look for those crappies this time of year uh, moving in towards shore. Uh, anywhere there's that moving water, we have a lot of lakes up in the Alexandria area, they're all intertwined and connected. Um, and so we have moving water between those lakes. And anywhere that there's that moving water, we're going to have a lot of bait. And where that bait is, we're going to have small fish, of course, big fish. Everything's going to start coming up into those areas. So look to those areas for some crappie. It's a great time to fish from shore. Even if you don't have a boat, uh, over the next few weeks to a month here, you're going to have great crappie uh, action as well as walleye all from shore. So um, uh, just look for those key areas, uh, those areas that warm up very quickly. And then any areas that have like that water running in there. So it can be a drainage area or traveling between the, the lakes, creeks, streams. All of the above is going to bring in uh, those fish into those areas. So um, a week from now, we'll be talking about walleye fishing. Um, but as of right now, I'm just happy to be on the water and get some of those crappies. 
Thanks, Joe. Now let's head east to Michigan with Captain Ron Dolm Jr. Today we're on an inland lake. We're doing a mix of smallmouth and walleye. Water temps are in the mid to high 40s depending on the day and depending on what lake you're on. Walleyes have been really cooperative, ideally in the early morning hours or late in the evening. Smallmouth, however, have been firing all day long. As you move out to Lake Michigan, we are seeing some king salmon pushing up the coast through Manistee and even a little bit into Frankfurt. So if the weather works out and you've got the opportunity, get out and chase those. And as we look at the Grand Traverse Bays, east and west, the Cisco and lake trout fishing is really firing off well. Those water temps are starting to hit 40 degrees and those fish know it. So be sure to get out and get after them this time of year. These things are just so healthy. Now that wraps up this week's BuzzBite Reports. And now it's time for our cool products brought to you by Omnia Fishing. Now we're going to start out with some jigs from Northland Tackle. Now they offer a variety of different jigs, so we're going to look at live bait and soft plastic jigs. So like this Mimic jig, this MVP jig, these would be great, you know, for fluke and a swim bait on the back of it, whether you're snap jigging or you're dragging it slowly across the bottom. And then when you're looking at something maybe for like live bait fishing, these are the shorter shank jigs that they offer, like the fireball jig. And some of these also feature a nice weed guard if you're fishing around weeds and timber. And also they have, you see below here, this is for a stinger hook. If you've got a big minnow, a crawler on there, you can put a little bit of a, a stinger harness on there as well. And the main thing, when you look at the Northland Tackle Selection, there's just a nice variety of jigs, whether you're live bait fishing or you're fishing soft plastics. And next from VMC, the Moontail Jig. And I've used this a lot and mainly for walleye, and you can snap jig this, especially early season snap jigging can work really well. This is a 3 8 ounce jig, so if you're fishing in current, you're fishing a little bit deeper, this can be really effective, and if you're going a little bit shallower, something like a quarter ounce or even 1 8 ounce can, can work really well. And you don't need live bait, you can fish this right out of the package, and it is incredible how well walleye will strike this, you know, when you're snap jigging it both you know, my favorite eighth ounce and quarter ounce if you're fishing, you know, in lakes and if you're fishing a little bit deeper or river current, I would go to like quarter ounce up to the three eighth ounce. And next from Big Bite Baits, the Slim Minnow in their Sensation series. And as you can see, this has a narrow profile, which is great for snap jigging. This is going to dart and fall down really quickly, and that can be very effective at triggering walleye to bite. It's formulated with scent as well, four inches in length, and some nice kind of shiny colors here. Perfect for walleye fishing, and also they have more realistic bait fish colors as well. Big bite baits, sensation, slim minnow. And next, Seafoam Marine Pro. Now, one can of this can treat up to 30 gallons of fuel. This is good for two-stroke, four-stroke inboard and outboard engines. This stabilizes fuel for up to two years, and this also will help maximize horsepower and performance. I mean, this is a must if you want your engines to last for a long time. Seafoam Marine Pro. And lastly, from CLAM, the Fortis TD Net. TD stands for teardrop, that's the hoop design. This is made of military grade aluminum, which means it's strong and lightweight. They have a glide lock technology. You see, I'll pull this out and then it locks into place there and it extends way out. Also features a laser etched ruler. This is really nice. I use this net a lot. You catch the fish, you come out and you measure it really easily. Also, it has a nice rubber coated polyester conservation net, which really helps protect the fish. This is an awesome net series from Clam. For these products and more, visit Omnia Fishing. And right now it's time for our technique of the week. Hi, Brian Brosdahl. I really love tungsten jigs and Northland created some tungsten jigs. And the neat thing about these is the weight and the profile and shape. 30% heavier than lead, so you get a total change in how you're jigging. So this tungsten actually resonates when you're jigging it. You can feel the bottom, but when you're jigging, you're creating action, faster action or slower action than you could when you're fishing with a regular jig. Cool shapes, great new eye, everything helps when the bites get tough. So jigging with plastics, I always like that long shank. What I'll do is I'll put the, the jig through to get the hook back farther. And there we go. Deadly weapon. 
And with that slender profile, it tips to the side, it wiggles. It's perfect for every kind of fish and extremely deadly for walleyes. Here's a short shank. Here's your typical rainbow or chub. The neat thing is you just get them to open their mouth and come out the back of the head and you're ready to go. And if you stick it on that, that plastic keeper, it stays straight. And then with tungsten, this tail vibrates way more. And with that flat head, you really get great action. These are both winners and are gonna be good for many situations, even some I haven't thought of yet, so good luck fishing. There's a lot of great uses for tungsten jigs and they're becoming more and more popular, not only for walleye, but panfish and bass as well. We wanna help stop the spread of aquatic invasive species anytime you're leaving any body of water. Remember, clean, drain, dry. We have a great sweepstakes going on right now. You can win a fabulous weekend up on beautiful Lake Vermilion. That's a big fish factory, a guided fishing trip with myself, as well as a hand-selected tackle pack from Omnia Fishing. And be sure to follow us across our social medias, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. It's simply Angling Buzz. And you can also visit anglingbuzz.com for more detailed fishing reports and articles. There's links down in the description for products that are featured on today's episode. And if you have any questions, please let us know in the comments. And here's another video from Angling Buzz.